the one you looking for the messiah is here shalom praise the lord gloria to dios today will be very exciting subject because i had few interviews in past couple of weeks and as you know that i had one of the interview and conversation very good conversation with very good rabbi asher meza that he obeys god's word So you're saying accept me and then you'll see me do the same thing. That's well, a little that's hard to believe. Well, uh, that's your Rambam. That's your Rambam tell you. But if the God choose the Moses when he killed somebody, okay, then God have rights to choose anybody. Very good questions he asked me, and it was very good debate. Uh, I I really love this guy uh, the way he smile and and the way he talk to me and ask me the questions. Uh there are certain questions that he ask me and uh, like I always tell you on my previous video that maybe I didn't give them a uh uh the answer in detail uh the way he probably wanted because of the we always have very short time. So I will give you a few things that we did talk about it and then also i'm going to talk about why i am not giving in up and so let's start with few things that one of the things that what i see on my this one was my third interview two times with uh, asher meza and one with uh, uh, mr uh, rabbi david abraham so on those uh, interview what i see they are focusing on me towards one thing is a kosher food second thing is to keep the shabbat the third thing is to keep the commandments uh, uh, and they are really into that plus the laws the 10 commandments now you know as the 10 commandment goes the first commandment was i am the only god and worship me only he is the only one the second one is do not make no idols which is most important uh uh commandments that god take that uh, uh seriously and most of the bible from beginning to the and or torah we talking about beginning to the end god talks about the idols and the idols been worship since the time of the genesis the time of the jacob time of the moses so the idol thing is the most important commandments uh in the whole chapter because God gave it to us that one as a second commandments. The third one he said, do not use his name in vain. The fourth one is keep the Shabbat. The fifth one is honor your parents. The sixth one is do not kill, do not steal, do not cheat, do not lie. and do not covet your neighbor's wife and do not covet your neighbor go against your neighbor uh, testify against your falsely testify against your neighbor there is a 10 one now all these 10 commandments they they talking about also connected to the 613 commandments now the torah doesn't say one by one by one by one by one by one 613 commandments but God gave it to Moses on Mount Sinai 10 commandments two tablets with the 10 laws and those 10 laws are the one is uh somehow uh, you can uh, use and separate and use according to uh, the problems you have so judges and king can judge or or give their answer right 
So those 613 commandments, those are connected to either Shabbats or some festivals or the temples um, or our regular days when the people sin or people do something wrong. So those are the 613 commandments they are talking about. That Almost all over the world, people are using right now in their justice system. So the Ten Commandments is the most important commandments that God has given us. Now, to, to uh, add or subtract, he's talking about those Ten Commandments. Do not take anything out from those Ten Commandments because those Ten Commandments are connected to your 613 Commandments that you all are talking about. Now, command and the commandments is two different things. When he says that I command you, when I command you, when I tell you something, then you do that one. And then you will come out from that problems. That's what he means. So he said, when I command you, do not add or subtract. Remember, when Saul went and captured the king, the 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 one of the king, and God have told him that you kill everybody, but he let go the king, and he got the punishment for that. So to the king David time, his son ate that honeycomb when when God have told nothing to eat, and he ate and he broke that law. That's called command, and then he got punishment for that. So those are the command when God gives you, you listen. Now about the prophet, that he said that he will raise the prophet like Moses among you, brethren, but among the Israelites. Now when it comes to Israelite, look, they all been in exile. Almost everybody are migrated in different countries. They are all over the world. Torah says, the Bible says, uh, they are all over the world. The God said that he will bring one by one, by handpick himself and bring it back. Now, they don't know. They really don't know they are Jew or not because they took and adopt the culture of that time. Now, Hinduism is 6,000 years old. Now, Judaism is 3,500 years old, uh, Christianity is 2,500 years old, and, uh, and Muslims are 1,500 years old. So tell me whom God was walking with. I am not over here trying to justify myself because I born and raised in Hindu family, but let me tell you, we also have our rules and regulations. Our parents teach us the best thing that we can adopt from the life, and, and our uh, probably Bhagavad Gita and Mahabharata also teach the good things. Nobody teaching the bad things. There is a Ten Commandments over there also. So the thing is about Israelite, I am the part of the Judah. I born in Judah. I am the son of King David, the Daniel, the second son of Daniel. I am from the tribe of Judah. I am the Israelites. God will bring the one they don't know who they are, and he will bring them back to Jerusalem. And remember in Jeremiah, God literally said, even the, uh, the prophet Jeremiah said, that the one who are in exile, the one who went to exile in Babylon, the, those are the one blessed one. And God will bring them back. First, he, God will bring them back. That's a God promise to the one who was in exile. So when it comes to Israelite, I am one of your brother. So uh, look, I'm having a hard time because my brothers, my sister, they're still Hindu. Well, I am also consider myself a Hindu. But like I said, uh, Hinduism, Hinduism is just a religion and all religion teach you a good thing. 
So I am not over here to debate between Judaism and Hinduism or Muslim or Christianity right now, but I know who I am and that's what I'm trying to justify that I am from the tribe of Judah. And that's what God have promised uh, the scepter will come from the Judah that's who I am. I am the Shiloh or Shiloh, whatever you call. Now, remember, the Shiloh is where the tabernacle was built. <coughs> so if you have a questions where the temple should be built, uh, also it says in Jeremiah that where the, the Shiloh was, there is the tabernacle. So if you find the Shiloh, you will find the Shiloh was the rested <coughs> or dwell, and he will dwell again at the same place. So, uh, the about the prophet that he will raise the prophet like Moses among you. It's me, and you should listen to me because I am your Moshiach. I am your Moshiach. Now, the other question he had is about Jesus being a reincarnation. I never said Jesus being reincarnation. Or I believe as a reincarnation. Now, if we go to the New Testament, this is what mainly he was proclaiming about, that he is the source of King David and... His hair that makes him a superior, that makes him a creator, that makes him somebody else. And then he said, "Me and my father is one. I am he." Now, uh, then he can use any title he wants because when he said, "I am he," he can say, "I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of the life. I am uh, the true wine. I am the gate." I mean, he can use any title he wants. He entitled to because the way he said he is above everybody. But I am not that one. I am not a Jesus. I am God has sent me to you just like the God sent it to you to Moses to get you out from the Pharaoh bondage. And I am trying to get you to the promised land. Remember, all are in exile. All are in exile. They are the one, the blessed one, and they are the one when they go back, they really will know who they are. Because all the promise God has given us, we will get back. The redemption is very close. It's by faith. By faith, you're going to accept me. Don't go after my kosher food or don't go about my Shabbat because Shabbat is to do the good thing, not the bad thing. Or just sit down. God want to give you a Shabbat whole year long, whole life long. In Hebrew 4.10, it says, if you enter into my rest, you will have rest from your labor means you do not have to worry about the work. The, you need to first enter into his rest. What is the rest? The rest is the Jerusalem. The rest is the promised land. The rest is where the, God, you will see the God glory. The, the rest is when you receive the redemption. Then you will know what is called the rest when you do not have no burden. There is no yoke. His yoke is so light and there is no burden. That day you will understand what is the rest, what is the Shabbat. Shabbat is for to do good thing and Shabbat is forever. That's what God wants to give you. Now come to the kosher. Over a period technology and years after years, things are changed. Things are the way they are cutting, the way they are cleaning, the way they are, the meat and the vegetables and all the produce. It's been changed. 
It's been changed. If they eat the pig, that's their problem. God will deal with them. But God put those things, animals, and and the and the, the, the and the sea and on the earth for us. In the beginning, it says it's everything is made for us. Yes, in Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, it, it does say about certain foods and certain things that do not eat. But if they eat, that's their problem. If they get sick, it's their problem. But, but that has nothing to do with me because I born and raised in vegetarian where, where we eat only nothing but the vegetarians. We were vegetarians. So the thing is, don't go after me just for the kosher and the Shabbat. I have Shabbat every day for the last 22 years. I do not work. I do not work. And about the Torah, I read Torah every day. I read Torah every day. So the thing is, don't judge me because I have that right. And if I judge, it will be just. Because God has promised me, the ancient one, I am the one will be on the throne. And the millions and millions of angels stood by me. And, and, and uh, millions of angels uh, ministered to me. And thousands and thousands of millions listened to me. And the book will be open, and I will be judged. That's what God has told me, and I am just passing down to you that I am not your fake Moshiach. You are not going to find. You cannot build the temple. No way. other day, I was listening to this young boy that he was had an experience out of body. Uh, and I was listening to him, and he said, and I believe him, I believe him. And one of the things he said was very powerful. And it makes me a tears in my eyes. And he said, the Messiah is on the earth. And the Messiah, he said, he is in the highest level. And he is on the highest level because he had repented. He had repented, and he is absolutely right. And I had repented year after year after year. Tears after tears were coming out from my eyes. Because I did not want this life. I had this life. I had everything. I had money. I had power. I had everything at one point. But I wasn't happy. Because I have to please everybody and I have to do to please other people. And I have no problem pleasing everybody if they were doing the right thing. But if they were doing the wrong thing and I have to please them, my spirit was telling me that you need to get out. You need to get out. You need to get out. And I couldn't get out. In fact, I was just getting in and in and in. And every night the tears were coming out from my eyes. And I was telling God either there is a God. There is a God, then either take me or get me out from this problem. Just get me out of this problem. I don't need this life. And after one year of crying, maybe two years of crying, the tears after tears, he literally came to me. He came to me and he said, you the one that I've been looking for. And that's who I am. If... Maybe he saw me in his vision. Maybe he saw, he, maybe he will know if he see my face. Because that's who I am. And I am telling you again and again, take the step of faith and believe me, accept me. Let's start building the temple and you will see the God glory. I am not a witchcraft. Again, I told you, everything is written. Now, there are a lot of things you can ask me as a question, but God has already given you everything. He already did everything for me, even if you go into the New Testament, and if the Jesus came, 
Now, I'm not going to ignore that part, okay? Because what he said, what he teach, what the parable and the teaching, and the way he talked with the power, I'm not going to ignore him. I am sure God had sent him to do the work. And maybe he's a, he's a, what they said is a God. He could be a God because it says he came in the flesh. But he didn't do the work what Moshiach supposed to do. He didn't came to do that work. He left for me. He left for me. He, whatever he said is all left for me. And I am here to take you home. Now you're going to have to take by faith. Believe me because God promised King David his son will be his son, and I will be his son, and he will be my father. So that makes me his son. And you're going to have to believe me by faith to receive the redemption and start building the temple. Now, I'm not going to over here stand up and proclaim all this time again and again and again. But one more thing I will tell you that I'm not giving in up. Even though you don't believe me, I know you're not going to believe me. I know you may not accept me. I know you are a stiff neck. I know you will try to put me down. I know you will do everything in your power to not to accept me. But I have a good news for you. I'm not giving it up unless the God of Jew is a liar. Unless the God of Jew is a liar. That's the only time I'm going to give up. So remember, I'm not giving it up. You can do whatever you want to do. And if you don't listen to me, the days are coming. Those older people not going to see the God glory. That's what's going to happen just like it happened in Exodus. You murmur, you don't listen, he's going to throw you out. You may not see the promised land. You may still stay in exile and get those plagues that God has promised in the end of the world, end of the time. Now, it's come. As far as come to the Daniel, I am the Daniel from the dead. Either you accept me or not, that's what the word says. And you should believe the word. Sometimes you will talk about only five books. And then sometimes you go all the way to Malachi. Now stick with it. And don't tell me, oh, there is a two version of everything. There is no two version. There is only one version. There is no two Torahs over here. Now, if my Torah is different than your Torah, then you are putting the Torah down. That's what, that's why those Muslim people tell you, oh, your Torah and your Bible versions are so many times changed. No, God gave me this book. He gave me this book. And each and every word is correct. This is the book. You do not take any word out, subtract or add. From the beginning to the revelation, Genesis to revelation, each and every word is inspired by God. And you do not have no rights to take or add or subtract. Yes. And I believe in that very strongly. So whatever you have in your mind about me, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Contact me. Come to me. Let's sit down. Now listen. There is a rolls of Levites. There is a rolls of uh, 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 judges. There is a rolls of um, uh, Kohen. Listen, I can do their work. I'm a king. They're going to they're gonna have to do a lot of things for me and for the temple. And I will do the thing what I'm supposed to do for the people. That's who I am. That's what God has trained me for, to be good with the people. 
and take care of his people. That's who I am. And I don't know why he choosing the end time king and the priest is one rather than two separate. Unless he must have trusted me with the whole thing. And I am, I can say I'm very proud that God, God choose me. But I am not exalting myself that God have choose me. I am, uh, I'm happy that he choose me. And I will obey. I will obey each and every commandments and command of these. As I hear from him, as I learn from him, I will keep my word. Because that's what I supposed to do. Obey his word. Obedience. Obedience is better than your sacrifice. He do not need your sacrifice. He wants you to be obedient and listen to the prophet he send you. Your Rambam and Rabbi did bring you to this point where Mashiach is on the earth. He is here. He is walking and that's me. You're not going to find nobody. Nobody will talk to you like the way I am talking. Even that boy, young boy who had experience, he knows also the Moshiach is walking on the earth. And that's me. There is nobody. You have to have a power or you have to have guts to talk like that. And that only come from him. Nobody else. Nobody can touch me. Remember, the guy, uh, the sorry, Rabbi Asher Meza asked me about, am I divine? He don't die. No, I would not die because I already resurrected. I'm the first one to resurrect it from the dead. Daniel from the dead. I am that person. And so about that young boy, okay, whatever he saw, whatever he said, it's all are connected to me. I am walking on the earth. And you all going to have to believe me sooner or later. But sooner you believe, the sooner we will build the temple because we are in the end of the days. You want to tell me, you want me to say the word, the, uh, what the word he used, uh, letter, letter days. The same thing is end of the days or the letter days only. What happened? God gave me this book so I can understand better because the wordings are little easier. So it is same Thing. There is no two versions of Torah or Bible. There is only one version from Genesis to, to Revelations. Now, Jesus never said he is the son of King David. Now, a lot of Christians are talking about he was the son of King David. No, he wasn't. And also, when they, they take, the, the Micah chapter 5, and they talk about that Messiah will come from the Bethlehem, and then they connect it to the Jesus Christ. That is not right, because if they read down there, he said that the, the, the Messiah will come from the tribe of Judah, first of all, and also from the distance land. From the distance land, if you read, it's not his, yes, from the Judah, tribe of Judah, they were in that time over there. King David was over there, so I was born over there, so of course, but in the end time, he will come from the distance land, which is, you can call Shiloh, or you can call Daniel or Sami. Whatever you want to call. But that's who I am. From the distance land. Not the one they're talking about that, that, that Jesus will be. Yes, Jesus was born in the Bethlehem. No doubt. But so do I. So do I was born in that land. 
And, but in the end time, God says that he will come from the distant land. What is distant land? It could be in the different planet, or it could be the born in the past. Or, 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 uh, or from the, far from the uh, Bethlehem. That's what he's talking about. So you see, the people can take the wording differently. The, they do not finish all the chapter or read, and then they take some out of it, and then they explain to you, that's not the way to, to judge me. That's not the way to attack me. I know he didn't attack me, Reza didn't attack me, but the, the main point is wherever they ask me is about kosher, it's not important right now. Yes, it is important, one of the things. Uh, well, it, it doesn't in the Ten Commandments. It says keep the Shabbat, but it doesn't say keep the kosher food. It's not in the Ten Commandments. That's in the 613 Commandments, what the Memonites wrote it down. Okay, fine. But so I am now, I'm doing the, I am doing the Nine Commandments, okay. I am worshiping. The only the Father, He is the only God. There is no image. I do not have no idols because when I was caught up in heaven, they throw, told me to throw it away all those idols. And I put in the garbage bag and it's gone. The third thing, do not use God's name in vain. How can I use His name in vain when He is the one gave me the salvation. He's the one bring me back again. He's the one choose me among 8 billion people. How can I use his name in vain? Keep the Shabbat. You're keeping on Saturday. I'm keeping on Sunday. But I have a Shabbat since last 21 years. I do not work. I do not, I do not have to work. Because I already entered into his rest, which is the Shabbat for entire life. That's called Shabbat. Honor your parents and mothers. There is almost everybody in Hinduism, we honor our parents. But there is always bad person. There are bad sons and bad daughter. And, and, and they disrespect. But most of the things we've been taught that honor the parents. In fact, we in as a Hindu, we take the blessing every uh, festivals, and especially the New Year. We have a New Year today, yesterday, and today. And what we do first thing, we take shower, and the first thing, we take the blessing. We bow down to our parents, and we take the blessing. Then we go to the temple, and then we pray over there, and then we come back home, and then we, we meet everybody and greet everybody. So that's what we're doing on our parents. My mom and dad passed away, but till they were alive, we took care of them, all the family. So that is one of, I do not, I haven't killed anybody. I'm glad that I haven't killed. Still, I did still probably when I was young, who knows? But God have forgive me because I repented. I repented for my everything, lying, cheating, whatever we were doing, I had repented and God has forgiven me. And that's what God wants to give you. Just because of Jew, you tell him you're not lying. I'm sorry, but after the Shabbat on Saturday, I don't know what you do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Shabbat, you stay home, keep the phone down, no lights, this, that. Fine. But what about the other day? Do you lie? Do you steal? Do you cheat? Do you kill? All those things is everywhere. It's on the world right now, all over. You don't think so? Jew is in jail. Just like Indians, Pakistan, all over the world, people are, when they commit, they go to the jail. So those all things God wants to take away by giving us the Shabbat, where we're not going to have to do all these things, because Satan, the devil that you were talking about, 
is here and he's going to attack. He's been attacking me. Even though I been saved by him, I've been chosen by him. So he actually attacks me more than attacking you guys. So I've been attacked every day. But I know that who's the winner. I am the winner. You can debate as many as you want with me. In the end, I am the winner. Because it's been written. It's been given me that authority and the power from above. So the thing is, on the Ten Commandments, do not covet your neighbor's wife. And then the last one is, do not falsify against your, your neighbor. So, uh, of course, all those things, and I'm in America. How many people know their neighbors? Or even though you know the neighbors, did anybody invite you in their home? They do their own work and they cook themselves. They never invite you as the neighbor. And Torah and Bible, even though they know also that the, one of the commandments or you can call 613 commandments, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And when I purchased my house, I had called all my neighbors to come and have dinner with me. All of them, about seven houses surrounded my house. Let me tell you, I've been there for now 21 years. Not even one neighbor have invited us for dinner or even invited in their home. This is America. That's the way people live over here. This is not the God wants. God wants all time. The people come and drink tea at night time in King David place and eat and laugh and joy. There is the Shabbat. Those so, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments God has given us to know what we're doing right and wrong. Through that, we know we're supposed to do. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge. And he gave you that commandment, so we have the fear of the Lord. Nobody else. And when you have the fear of the Lord, you will know. And that's only I have. So I don't go down by somebody tells me, you not our Mashiach. Fine. On the time, you will know who I am. And, and that day, I, I, I still gonna have mercy on you. Don't worry. Because God had mercy on me. So the thing is, I understand there are a lot of people that are against me. That there are a lot of people who would not like me. Because that's the way this world is. You're going to have 50% like and 50% do not like. And 50% believe and 50% do not believe. But God gave you a chance to believe his prophet or his son, whatever you can call him. Because I am his son. I am his son. He promised my father that one day he will bring from his own seed, blood and flesh from his loin. One of his son, he will be in his throne forever and ever. And he will be his son and he will be my father. Simple. And if I do anything wrong, he will punish me, but he will not take the favor from me as he took from the soul. So this is who I am. I am the Shiloh. I am the son of God. I am son of David. I am the Daniel from the dead. I am the ancient one. I am the anointed one. I am the one to build the temple. I am the one to take you back home. And I am the priest and the king of Jerusalem and the whole world. Now, find somebody you can talk like that. Find somebody 
who can say all these things because they do not have that power. He is inside of me and he is the one talking to you. You all better get that straight before you die in your own sin and you do not see the God glory and you do not enter into the same thing what happened in the past and you will not see the promised land. The promised land is not the right now what you have in Israel. The promised land is when he will give you Shabbat and be dwelling with him over there in Jerusalem, there is called the promise that he gave you. He wants you to be with him. Where he will be, you will be. Those are the people will be the blessed one. Not the one left over. Not the one that's still there, but not doing the right thing. I was in Wailing Wall, and they tried to, one of the guys looked like a giant, and tell me, I'm going to kill you. I was just sitting on that one of the chair over there in the Wailing Wall. That's on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath, I know what they did in a crown, uh, 770, what was that, crown? Crown height. On the Shabbat is to do the good thing. You shouldn't be said anything. Keep mouth shut. Simple. But those are the things God have trained me. And we all will get the blessing. If we just start building the temple. Let God, let whole world see the God glory. And God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. To all the rabbis or Rambam, whatever you all call, please listen. Let other enter into the kingdom of heaven and the promised land. Tell them, let's start building the temple. Let's get together, which is important right now, because time is running out. Time is running out. I don't know. But as far as I know, we have another 10 years, which is 2032. And in these 10 years, you have to build the temple. Again, it will be destroyed. Again, the, the devil will be captured. All those things, whatever is written, 2300 days and three and a half years. That's another nine and a half years. All those things going to happen. So right now is time to build the temple. I thank you and I will see you very soon. If you like my episodes, please put thumbs up, subscribe me because I need to know that you all are watching my video. Please, thank you very much and God bless you.